Welcome back on Good Day Salute. I am here with the National Guard. I'm here with Lieutenant Colonel Smith, who is from the Army part, and Lieutenant Colonel Cox, who is from the Air Force part. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. First off, let's start off. Did we not know? I did not know that there's too many different parts of the National Guard. So can we first touch on the difference? I, I see you're in that uniform and you're in that uniform. What does the National Guard incorporate? Well, we have, as you already mentioned, both components of the uh, Department of Defense represented mm -hmm. the U.S. Air Force element and then the U.S. Army element. Um, we work both for the state uh, when we're not federalized, and we work for the president and the nation when we are federalized. And I know that's a big difference when you look at other branches of the government. So how does that kind of play out for you? Well, um, as, as he said, we work for the president. So... Uh, for my unit uh, up at Robbins Air Force Base, we've been continuously deployed for over 10 years uh, all around the globe, and, uh, but yet at the same time, uh, we've had people just as recently as February up in the north part of the state working with our Army National Guard brethren, uh, clearing roads during the uh, ice and snowstorms mm -hmm. that they had in the north part of the state. So we work for both a state mission and a federal mission. And what is it like? That's very different. What is it like to have both of those? Um, it's actually very interesting. Uh, yeah, I, I would say I think a lot of our uh, service members enjoy the giving back to community mm -hmm. that the state mission brings. Uh, most recently, uh, as Lieutenant Colonel Cox indicated, the snowstorms. Uh, but they also feel, obviously, a tremendous sense of duty to the nation. So there's a great pride that's associated with going overseas as well. And as a member of the National Guard, we're talking about most of our, mem our members are Georgians. They're people who live here, and so these are community-based members, and so it is. There's a lot of pride in going out and being able to help local communities within the state, our state brethren, during state emergencies, mm -hmm. but at the same time having the opportunity to go and uh, serve our country and defend the, the nation. Yeah. So having many people, residents in the state, actually be part of the National Guard, have you ever ran into people maybe in the ice storm that you actually kind of knew? Oh, absolutely. Uh, all the time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, absolutely. I uh, have done that. Um, uh, uh, particularly in uh, the, the ice storms, we had people who were helping folks that they may be uh, golf buddies with or mm -hmm. maybe fishing buddies with or been hunting with. Um, and so, again, that's the thing about the National Guard. We're community-based. Uh, we're, we're part of the uh, community family. Perfect. We'll have more from the National Guard in a couple of minutes. Welcome back to Good Day Salute, everyone. I'm here with the National Guard this morning. We're joined with Lieutenant Colonel... Smith from the Army portion of the National Guard and Lieutenant Colonel Cox from the Air portion of the National Guard. We were talking about the difference between the National Guard and some other branches of the military, but we're learning that the National Guard is very community-based and actually has a very big economic impact on the state. It does. We, um, you know, we're paid by the federal government, uh, and the state derives about $25 million worth of state income tax off of the pay that all of mm -hmm. our service members receive. But the state only contributes about $9 million to our overall budget. So it's a great benefit for Georgia that we have the types of units in the Air Guard and the Army Guard that we have here in the state. And it makes a huge difference as well. And also we were talking about right before we came on that you guys get actually get a lot of community involvement and a lot of thank yous from people just because the National Guard is community based. What does that feel like? What is it like to go down the street and know that your neighbors thanking you every day for the things that you do? Um, it's really it's it's really awesome. Uh, it's one of the benefits of uh, being a Georgian, uh, working in the mm -hmm. National Guard, and living in Georgia. Um, we go away to deployments. Uh, both Army and the Air uh, go away on deployments, and we come back. Uh, but our neighbors really it doesn't matter if we've been gone. They just see us in a uniform, and a lot of times they're just uh, uh, very grateful for the service, and uh, that's awesome. And what is it? But what? It, how does it hit home for you? Just because maybe if you weren't in the National Guard and you were maybe in the Navy, it could be very different, I'm not sure, but knowing that you can come home and everyone that you know is still there and still saying thank you, they're like your, your other part of your family. Yeah, it's, I, I think we are the connection mm -hmm. that, uh, that most of Georgia has to the military. You know, the, uh, the downsizing of the military over previous decades has, has moved people onto bases, so, and there's fewer bases, whereas we're still out in the community in both the Air and the Army Guard. Um, so it's a real touch point, I think, for the citizens of Georgia, uh, and they are not shy, as Colonel Cox said, about, about thanking us. It really warms your heart when it happens. And does that make it easier being able to go out in the community and not make it feel like this is more of a job? 
to you? Um, a lot of times, yes, because we are, uh, we're members of the community, uh, mm -hmm. so we're invested in the community as well. Um, I, I, we don't PCS, we don't move and change. Right. Uh, change. Uh, I've been in uh, the Warner Robins area at Robins Air Force Base since the mid-90s. Uh, and before that was, was with a unit up in Atlanta. So staying in the state, working in the state, living in the state. So we're invested in the community, um, which is, uh, is make, makes it very special to do. As you mentioned also, um, it's a little hard sometimes to deploy because we live there. This is, yeah. These are our people. But because of that, it's uh, good for our families to know that because we're embedded in the communities, uh, our families are taken care of because that is where we live, that's where we raise our children, and that's where we spend our time. Yeah. And very quickly, I want to touch on this before we have to go. If someone is interested in maybe employing, but they don't know where to or what they want to go into, why maybe the National Guard? Well, the, you know, the National Guard allows for that dual aspect of service. You can, you can stay at home, attend school, do whatever you want to do as a civilian, uh, but you still get to serve your state and nation. Uh, and it's, it's just tremendously inspiring to us that since 9-11, uh, so many young men and women still continue to raise their hand and, and come in. It's, it's truly an all-volunteer force. Absolutely. It is an all-volunteer force, and it's a great opportunity to be able to travel and get skills and serve your country, but you get the uh, return ticket and you get to come back to your home state. Yep. And then that translates into the yeah. community as well such a nice feeling. Well, we want to thank you both for coming on this morning and, of course, for all that you do. Well, thank, thank you, you very much for having us. us.